Uh, real quick disclaimer, not a financial advisor, don't play one on TV uh, or any of that type of stuff. So if you're going to ever employ real capital, make sure you're talking to one of those really, really, really smart people, uh, people that are smarter uh, than I am before you do um, uh, anything, put any real capital downrange. Um, folks, at, at the end of the day, trading is a form of combat. Any of the presentations you're going to hear today, uh, it's a form of combat, right? There's a winner and there's a loser. And uh, I certainly plan on being on the right side of that trade. Who said that? Well, hopefully you uh, by the end of my uh, time speaking with you this afternoon. So my name is uh, Matthew Buckley. My call sign's Wiz. Uh, as Reed said, my parents did like me. They didn't name me Wiz. Uh, uh, I earned uh, that call sign flying the uh, FA-18 Hornet for the United States Navy for about 15 years. I graduated from the Navy Fighter Weapons School uh, that many of you know as Top Gun, and I also flew uh, 44 combat sorties uh, over uh, Iraq. Uh, and I'm actually coming to you from uh, Chicago, and we'll get to, get to that in a couple minutes. Uh, I also am a uh, executive business consultant. I'm up here in Chicago actually speaking with uh, uh, Matthews International, one of the largest uh, funeral and one of the largest food companies uh, in the world. Uh, next week, uh, coming up here, I'm working with a biotech firm. I go into these companies, folks, and I teach them about developing strategies, implementing tactics, leadership, holding people accountable, contingency planning, debriefing, everything that I learned uh, in the military, flying fighter aircraft, I apply to their companies. Also wrote, uh, wrote a book uh, called From Sea Level uh, to Sea Level, which kind of documents uh, that, uh, that, that journey from sea level literally to sea level. What's that have to do with trading? everything. I've worked with probably 150, maybe 200 clients uh, over the past, uh, I'd say 10, 15 years, and here's a sampling of them, of some of the big ones. Uh, VMware, uh, just take a look at the industries, oil, technology, financial services, um, uh, Cargill, uh, like I said, JBS, real estate investment trust, uh, electronics, healthcare, biotech. Folks, um, this is a this is a very very big deal. Why? Because I know what is going on in the economy before the guys on CNBC, Comedy Central, I call it, let you know about it. If you're getting your financial news from a guy with a cowbell and an air horn, you deserve everything bad that's going to happen to you. Now, real quick for all the attorneys out there, I'm a fiduciary to these companies. I will never tell you what is going on. And I have a top secret clearance, folks. Trust me, I take stuff to the grave. Uh, I can't trade in these names. I don't tell you what's going on with these companies, but guess what it does? It provides me what I call SA, situational awareness. I know what's going on in these sectors, in these industries. Who's buying? Who's uh, firing? Who's hiring? Who's acquiring? Folks, Stevie Cohen at SAC, he should be in prison right now, but most of his lieutenants are going that way, would pay millions of dollars for the type of knowledge that I have and I pass on to my traders completely legally. And as I said, if you're waiting for some well-coiffed person with super hair and fabulous teeth to tell you about something that's going on in the market, it's already old it's over with and you missed your opportunity, okay? And like I said, uh, if you're taking stock or investing advice from a guy with an air horn or a cowbell, you deserve everything bad that's going to happen to you, okay? I've also worked with some other high-performing teams. <laughs> I've worked with Cam, good game last night, uh, and Coach Rivera uh, recently, and also with uh, Sam Bradford and uh, Coach Fisher. That was a couple years ago because unfortunately Sam them to yourself. Uh, speaking of being up here in Chicago, that's where uh, I worked, right there in the Chicago Board of Trade. You can see all these big vertical windows right there. Uh, I worked at uh, Six Investments, um, right there in the Chicago Board of Trade, one of the largest volatility arbitrage firms here in the United States. So uh, I went from essentially the cockpit to the trading pit, and I got to be honest with you that I felt like uh, Billy Ray. Uh, in trading places, felt like a couple rich white people were, uh, you know, betting a dollar on me, and in the end, they actually both lost. So when I came up here to Chicago, I was a retail, self-taught retail options trader. 
back when I taught myself to trade options before Al Gore and men in the internet, uh, I literally had to go to the uh, library on the Naval Air Station and taught myself how to trade equity options. There was no Top Gun options. There was no financial training. So one of the reasons I built this was for people like you who were people like me. So I was a managing director of strategy for Peak Six Investments. It's uh, one of the largest vol arb uh, options trading firms in the country, and I was also the founder and CEO of the Options News Network, ONN.TV, which many of you All right, guys, looks like we have a little bit of an audio issue here. Uh, looks like uh, Matt is trying to reconnect to his network, so just one moment while he brings up his audio. Just want to make sure uh, I'm, I'm getting a little interference. Okay, you guys can hear me now? Good. Exactly, Top Gun's observing radio silence. My apologies. Service here, uh, training. There's no such thing as fi financial education. If you hear anybody use those terms, run as fast as you can. The world's full of educated derelicts. Training is going to give you a skill. Doctors are trained, plumbers are trained, fighter pilots have trained, and we've trained thousands of traders of all experience levels over the uh, the past uh, five years. Um, so. And I have contingency plan, folks, because if the hotel uh, wireless here goes down, I'm, I'm going through my phone. So I have two. I got my contingency plan and my backup. Everything you're going to learn at Top Gun Options is combat tested and Wall Street proven. We use what we call a demo-do approach in the military. I demonstrate something to you, and then you're going to do it. And that's what we're going to do here at TGO. Real quick, year-to-date performance before we get into our live trading, uh, before the market close, and I show you my model portfolios and uh, the trades I'm looking at putting on. Uh, take a look at uh, about just an average of 1,800 hedge funds uh, year-to-date in 2015. 0 0.29, folks. I mean, that's I can find that in my couch. Look at one of the best years recently, 11.12% in 2013. Here is our primary live trade brief model portfolio, up $30,000 year to date. That's a 73.5 return on risk. Crushing it. Our urgent alert and weekly options model portfolio, 132% return on risk. There's red, always... Always brief the red, folks, but we trade weekly options mainly on Apple and the S&P 500, uh, some Chipotle and not doing so good uh, on that, and I'm not feeling good after that E. coli scare, uh, but up about $40,000 year to date. These are $100,000 model portfolios, folks, and here's my, quote, worst performing portfolio, accelerated retirement, 24.9% return on risk. That's our retirement portfolio, folks. Okay, and this should be the, quote, worst performing portfolio because this is a little bit more um, conservative. Okay, Look at the top and bottom hedge funds. Well, ignore the bottom, but look at the top hedge funds of uh, 2015. 18.6% is, uh, is the top hedge fund there. Okay, uh, James, good question. Uh, completely different. Let me go back and explain something to you. Return on risk. Ladies and gentlemen, the Topkin Options model portfolios are $100,000 model portfolios. Okay? At any given time, and I can show you, at any given time, I'm only using 30, 40, 50 grand of
dollars. It's at risk, okay? And I trade options. All of it is in options. The sixty grand that's sitting there in cash isn't at risk. So we calculate our returns based on what is at risk. If something's not at risk, it's not at risk. Kind of a Yogi Berra statement, but you get what I'm saying. Stock traders don't nec can't necessarily do that, right? So, uh, and even if you did want to calculate it kind of the old school type of way, uh, you could say that our portfolio is up 18.5% on 100 grand. We don't do that. Options to none of the firms or the hedge fund that I, I'm the chief development officer of a hedge fund. We base our returns on risk, okay? So that's what, it's ROR, return on risk. Okay, so our portfolios are outperforming the top 20 hedge funds and smart money folks. You don't need to pay some overpriced hedge fund manager two and 20 uh, to, to, for, for something that you can do on your own. Real quick before we start trading though, folks, if, if, you, if you ever go to one of these and all they show you is winning trades and how great they're doing and everything like that, run as fast as you can, seriously. The objective is to win the war. Whatever your war is, save for college, saving for retirement, short-term income generation, managing risk, you are going to lose some battles. There are losing trades, period. I want to win about 60 to 70% of the time. Now, some of you might be sitting there going, whoa, 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 why isn't that 100%? Because it's physically impossible. You can't. Losing trades are going to happen. Professional investors want to win 50, 60, you know, 51 to 60 percent of the time. Why? Because they know over time that's a victory. Now, here's a perfect example. Let me channel my inner Rumsfeld. There are known knowns in a trade, right? Things that we know we know. There are known unknowns, things that we know we don't know. Earnings. We know they have earnings this week, but we don't know how they're going to do. Great. But there are unknown unknowns that can reach out and touch us. Let me give you a perfect example. We do weekly options live trade briefs every Monday at 1 o'clock. We put on weekly options positions. About a month and a half ago, I put on an iron condor, a weekly iron condor on uh, Google, right? The class A or whatever shares. Um, market closes. I go to change to alphabet. I'm like, are you kidding? Stock's up 5% after hours. At that point, you just laugh. Why? Because that was a missile I just could not have seen. And if I did know that information, I'd probably be in jail. Or if anybody knew that information and traded off it and it was not public, they should be in jail. How the hell was I supposed to know that they were going to alphabet? I don't even know what that means. And it's one of those things that even though they've changed the name of their company, nobody's going to call it that. It, it was dumb. It doesn't matter. I got blown out on that trade. So there are some unknown unknowns out there that if people don't brief you on, they're doing you a great disservice. Okay? Real quick, write this down on a piece of paper. SOT. This is the Top Gun Options methodology. You don't need any fancy trading software, folks. The, the software in your brokerage platform, I don't care who you trade with, is equal, if not better, than some of the proprietary uh, trading software in these firms that I'm looking out the window at here in Chicago. Why? Because retail brokers want you to trade more and be more successful. They make more money. Their tools are pretty damn good. Okay? The only trading software that you need, folks, and if you're download our $50 a month trading, again, run as fast as you can. The only software that you need is the six inches of seven inches, two inches maybe for my marine buddies, of gray matter between your ears. There's nothing else that you need, period, besides a brokerage plat platform and a brain. Here's what we're going to do. Here's our methodology, strategic operational tactical. During my live trade briefs, and I'm going to give you a very abbreviated one in a couple minutes, we're going to do a strategic brief. After that, operational and then tactical. And I'll explain what that means in a little bit. Because out of the hundreds of traders on here, I'd say 98% of you are very tactical. You can't even tell me what's going on operationally here in the United States, let alone strategically around the globe. Right? Who the hell is Harishi Kuroda? Well, he's the Bank of Japan governor, and he's kind of acting like Janet Yellen, and he can move the market. 
What's the PBOC stand for? People's Bank of China. What? So very, very tactical. Many of you get up and say, well, hey, this guy's talking about Tesla on CNBC today. I think they make cars. Let me get into this trade. And two weeks later, that trade lost all your money. Very, very tactical traders. Okay? So, S. Very, very high ranking. Got a lot of folks up in D.C. You need to know what's going on geopolitically, militarily, and economically. From what Mario Draghi is saying in a press conference tomorrow to what's going on in Syria um, to what's going on in the South uh, China Sea. All of it. How many of you a year and a half ago could have pointed out Crimea on a map and you woke up and you went, why the hell are the futures down 300 points? And why is Russia invading Crimea? Holy crap, they just shot down an airliner. These things impact the market. Okay? So, after we do a strategic brief, then we get operational. We take a look at what's going on here in the United States. What, what's going on with the Fed? Uh, how are earnings looking? Core durable goods, unemployment numbers. We get operational and, and twist it down one level here to the United States. Okay? That's what we need to do. Okay, and then finally, we can get tactical. This is where we can look at trades. What type of trades do we put on? This is exact opposite to how many of you think, okay? So strategic, operational, tactical. It's the same thing in the military, folks. Strategic, win the war in Iraq. Operational, take this town. Tactical, guard this bridge you know why you're doing it, okay? Strategic versus tactical. And I will take credit for this. About a four block radius around where I am right now, I've changed options terminology. There's no such thing as an options strategy. Whiz, I disagree. My favorite strategy is an iron condor, and you'd be wrong. Okay? So, what do I mean by that? Why are you doing an iron condor? Well, I want to buy a boat in six months. That's your strategy. I want to save for college. I want to save for retirement, short-term income generation, managing risk. Those are strategies, ladies and gentlemen. Tactics support strategies. So if we talk about a bear call spread today, a bear call spread is a tactic. It is not a strategy. Because at the end of the day, folks, trading is a form of combat. Somebody's going to win and somebody's going to lose and you can be damn sure I plan on being on the right side of that trade. Write this down. Please do me a favor, take your cell phone out, take a picture of it. I, I, I don't know what you need, but get a screenshot of this because we're gonna go through this trade plan. I bump, as I travel around the United States, I bump into a lot of people who are like, Wiz, I always hear people say, I Vice versa. Step one, determining your strategic mindset. Bullish, bearish, volatile, or neutral. And we're going to determine that based on what's strategically going on in the world. For the past two weeks, Chinese GDP, GDP and manufacturing data have moved our markets, folks. When you wake up Monday morning and see the futures down, you can be damn sure it was most likely something Sunday night in China. So what is our strategic mindset? Then we can take a look at our target. The target is simply the stock, the ETF, or the index. That, that's what we're going to target. Step three is commit criteria. And literally, that is, why are we committing capital to this trade? I call it the elevator pitch. If you get in an elevator with me on the 30th floor by the by the lobby, you need to prove to me with three to five sentences why you are in a trade, why you are committing capital to the trade. If you can't, and I hear people fumble through this all the time, why are you in this Apple trade? Uh, I, I, I like Apple. Wrong answer. Okay. Then we get to step four, which is the tactic. Okay, and the tactic is not an iron condor, a broken wing butterfly, selling puts. Those are it, 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 tactics, folks. 
It's isn't a strategy. So the tactic is simply that, the trade. Then we talked about tactical employment. How am I going to put this trade on? It's an iron condor. It's got four legs. Here's how I'm going to do it. Then we discussed mid-course guidance. Folks, I didn't drop a bomb and just close my eyes and go, man, I hope that hits bad guys. Bombs need mid-course guidance, just like a trade does. You don't squeeze the trigger on real capital and put a trade down range and hope. Hope ain't a strategy. Finally, the exit plan. This is our Colin Powell doctrine. This is our, we know when we're going to get out of a trade before we ever get in it. Why? Because we want to take the emotion out of it. So when we hit our profit target, when we when we know it is time to get out of a trade because we've lost some money, our max acceptable loss, it is time to leave. Okay? So that was the price of admission right there. A seven-step trade plan. Now you have one. You come over to TGO, I'm going to... to fight another day. Sometimes you have to give the jet back to the taxpayers, man. And it's a bad day. And it's a bad trade and we got to get out of it. But we're going to learn from it and get better. Okay? In today's market, we can be two things. Offensive, taking shots of opportunity. Aggressive, that's us and we trade weekly options. We can be defensive, a little longer term, preserve some capital, keep some powder dry. That's our accelerated retirement program. And then we have two live training sessions throughout the week that are a little bit of both. So we have four live training sessions throughout throughout the week that give you access to different portfolios that have different strategic mindsets, okay? Write this acronym down and then we're gonna get airborne with a trade. Barrow F, or I guess if you wanted to do an anagram, it would be FearBo. <laughs> I did a webinar in January, folks, and said these areas are gonna drive the market this year and we turned out to be right and they still will. B, Brazil. We had some great trades last year around the World Cup. doesn't matter if Brazil is an absolute train wreck with Dilma getting ready to be impeached and people living in favelas. The World Cup went on off without a hitch. They built a lot of infrastructure. They got the Olympics coming up. Now, I know with the uh, slide in commodities and, um, and oil, it's hitting them a little bit, but I use the, um, the uh, Captain Kirk School of Investing sometimes. I boldly go where, another, uh, where others are not going. George Soros, Carl Icahn, Warren Buffett, Stevie Cohen, Ken Griffin. None of these guys, folks, became quadrillionaires by following the crowd, by following you, to be honest with you. They go where things and people are not going. E, Europe. Folks, I didn't want the, the train wreck in Greece to end this summer. I loved it. We made $35,000 in a month in our weekly options model portfolio. How? Hey, we have a deal, market pops. No, we didn't. I'd sell a bear call spread, weekly bear call spread, into that pop. Oh, my God, we don't have a deal. They're going to get kicked out of the euro. No, they're not. I'd sell a bull put spread. It was like shooting fish in a barrel. Knock on wood, we didn't have one losing trade around that time in the weekly options portfolio. It is, it was awesome. So Europe. Now, and be printing euros. A, Asia. Okay, if you, unless you've been living on the other side of Mars, you know that <laughs> the the Chinese stock market, their GDP, their issues have been definitely impacting our markets. Are Russia? O oil. The volatility in the oil markets in January, February, and also recently is whipping our markets around. And finally, the F, Fed. There's your acronym, acronym, folks. Barrow F or Fearbo. We got positions in every one of these areas, and we're doing extremely well with it. Okay? So <clears throat> let's go ahead and get airborne. Now, I'm going to show you my trading cockpit. I use, I helped build it. It's literally right down the street from where I'm talking right now, Options House. It used to be Trade Monster. If you know John and Pete Najarian, uh, buddies of mine from up here, good dudes. They build it, but Options House bought it. 
I helped build Options House a couple years ago, but let me show you my trading cockpit. That's my former cockpit in the uh, F-18 there. Um, I'm not going to have a ton of time because I only have about 45 minutes to do a full SOT, Strategic Operational Tactical. As a matter of fact, I just got done my my trade brief with um, with my normal subscribers. Every Tuesday at 1, I trade for about an hour and a half, uh, which worked out perfect for this. And uh, so I just did a full-blown hour and a half. I'm, they, they get the replay. They get the trades texted out to them. Good, good, good stuff. Uh, so they they got all uh, the weekly options trades. But real quick around the world here, folks. Um, the, the the slowing China is is a big story with their GDP. But guess what? When the Chinese premier sets a growth target of six point five percent for the next five years, what do you think they're going to hit? Anybody want to take a, anybody want to take a bet? If the Chinese premier is saying this is our our low water mark so to speak, that he put a floor underneath it, kind of like the Bernanke put that we've had for years. Uh, had a little bit of a manufacturing miss over the weekend. Uh, so China remains a, a big, big story, and we are going to feel that. When China sneezes, we catch a cold. Remember, folks, they are our banker. Okay? Um, they are the number one foreign holder of U.S. Treasuries. My other buddy up here, Rick Santelli, uh, he and I used to Whiz. Yeah, that's nice. Don't you wish you could do that? Don't you wish you could buy your own debt? That would be nice. We can't. Um, we already talked about Mario and Mario telling us the truth. Mario uh, admits global QE has failed. The slowdown is probably not temporary. Okay? Global factory struggle stimulus fails to spur any sort of growth. Well, duh. Here's why, folks. Take a look at the U.S. stock market in green. Look at U.S. macroeconomic data, durable goods, Atlanta Fed. You name the macroeconomic data. These two graphs, they could not keep going apart forever. And when they met, it got ugly. Everybody remember back when the world ended right around here. And I can show you that uh, that chart. Um, we're at, he looks like uh, James Bond from Spectre or a villain from James Bond, Putin. Talked about him. Uh, AIG, I, I really don't have time to go through a lot of this stuff, folks. AIG, we have long, a lot of long, very long positions that are doing great in AIG, especially after Carl Icahn uh, tweeted last week that he's got a pretty big stake. They had bad earnings. Not bad. They called it messy earnings. Um, but when Carl Icahn jumps in something, he doesn't do it because he's a charity. Uh, we're going to talk about biggest thing on our radar for the week, though, folks, is Friday with a jobs report. Um, Non-farm payroll on Friday, looking for a buck seventy-nine uh, from one forty-two last time. Average hourly earnings are always important to look at. Are people making more, or are we flat, or are we making less? That's a big one, and also the labor force uh, participation rate. All right, now let's get tactical. Look at this. So here's the here's the world ending. Right here, there's China, more or less, ending the world, and the world going well. No, the sun came up. Here is a very see this pennant right here. I can draw it on my other chart, but there's a there's a real tight pennant here that was a triangle, and it broke right here to the upside. You know what this was right here? This was a Fed meeting. This was the meeting where people thought Janet was going to raise rates, and she didn't, and we got a pop. That pop was a relief pop of, hey, she didn't raise rates. I told my traders there's going to be a boo. You know what the boo was? She didn't raise rates, meaning very bullish. Rip your face off rally through the 50-day moving average. Ran out of airspeed. Everybody took some profits. Bounced off the 50-day moving average through the 200-day. Yeah, ran out of airspeed. Bounced. We're going to run out of airspeed here, guys. We are back up at historic highs. 
Jeffrey Gunlock, who's swinging around uh, what sixty-six billion dollars in in capital up at uh, Double Line out there in L.A., said we're up. The only reason we're up here is hope, and hope ain't a strategy. And that's coming from a guy in the military. There is no hope in this market. That this is a this is way too far, way too fast. And after we have these little bit of runs here recently. The market does this. Trust me, I had two hedge. Uh, I had two meetings today. One with my hedge fund, and you see these little pullbacks. These are all moments of people looking around at each other, going, "Hey, um, you believe in this? I, I, I don't know. Well, it kind of takes. A, I don't know. It's it's. <laughs> this is the Seinfeld rally, folks. It's kind of a it's a rally on nothing. Okay, now. Don't get me wrong. This is a train. This is the metro here in Chicago. When you either jump on the train or get out of the way. Stepping in front of it isn't always the smartest move. However, comma, by using my strategic operational tactical mindset that I just did for an hour and a half before I jumped on this webinar with my subscribers, I can tell you that we are due, for, based on a whole host of indicators and reasons, we're looking for a little bit of a short-term break here. We're going to give some of that back. And we can use the options market to predict about where it will pull back. I'm not going to do a weekly trade. I'm going to go out about a week and a half because I think that's when we're going to see a break is between now, me talking, and next Friday. It's time for a little bit. We're not going to keep doing this up triple digits every day here on nothing. Could we? Yeah. Will we? No, I don't think so. What are we at? Let's just round up and say 2110 on the S&P 500. Let's go to 2110, and using some options trickery, I'm going to say that the, well, not even trickery. Let me just click Create Spread, and I'm going to click Straddle. Don't, if, what the hell is a straddle with? Don't worry about it. I'm just going to use this as an indicator of how wide the options market is predicting. By next Friday, this market can move. Stay with me real quick. Look at that. Around a, and it's not perfect because I'm using the 2110 straddle and we're at 2109.58. So the math is off a little bit. But let's just say with about a 60 degree percent probability, the market thinks we're going to, the, the options market thinks we're going to be between 2076.50 and 2143.50. I think we're going to give some. We're going to give some back here, so I would be looking at a bear call spread up here at around 2140, 2145. So let's do that. Bear call spread. I'm going to click Create Spread, Vertical. Thanks, Mark. I appreciate it. Um, 2140, 2145. Uh, I might get a little. You know what? I'm going to bring that in a little bit because I really do. Um, we're over our ski tips. Taking a look at the VIX was up today. Write this one down. Here's another wisdom: Market up, VIX up, something is up. When the market is up, folks, and the volati volatility index is up, it's what I call a hold-your-nose rally. People don't believe it. That's usually that's a canary in my coal mine that says, you know, in the next couple of days we're going to see a rollover. So here's the bear call spread I'm looking at. I'm going to sell 15 of next Friday's 2135 calls. That's me saying I don't think the market is above 2135. The S&P 500 is above 2135 by next Friday. What if I'm wrong? Well, I'm going to buy 15 of the same expiration 2140 calls. That's my hedge to the upside. This is called a bear call spread. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to whoop, I'm going to select this because this is what I do in my live trading sessions. 80% of our TGO traders work. And hey, Wiz, I can't take time out of the day to, to do this. Well, guess what? You're about to get a immediate text alert from me. And then after the live trading session's over, I send out the replay and a, and a longer email with the screenshots of the trade. So watch this. Now, let's take a look at our metrics. The first place your eye should have gone was right here. Why not here, Wiz? I like smiling faces. Don't do it. 
That's what average retail traders do, and I'm going to train you not to be an average retail trader. Look at Mr. Sad. Fighter pilots, traders, we ask, how can we get killed, or what is our max loss going to be on this trade? 5600 bucks. If that's too much, too... crack your knuckles with a ruler if you look up here first. Don't ever do that. So I'm risking 5600 Why am I doing that? As a portfolio manager here at Top Gun Options, I have SOPs, standard operating procedures. I don't want to risk more than 5% of the model portfolio on any one trade. Why 5%? Why not? That's me. I've been doing this for over two decades, and that's my rule of thumb. I just don't want to risk more than five grand. 5% of my 100 grand. I want to live the fight another day. Okay, that's acceptable risk to me. Now our max profit is 1900 bucks with a 71% probability, and then there's our break even. It's about a 72% probability this trade's going to break even. I'm going to click on Create Order, click on Preview, and then I'm going to copy it. And I know I have some of my subscribers in here because... Uh, Reed, Reed puts on a great program here, so I want to. Uh, so I sent out an invite to all my folks. So admin, I send out. This is exactly what I did an hour ago, folks. We were sitting in a live trading session when I identify a, tra a trade. I blast it out to my subscribers. So I'm seeing some good questions. Let me just get this. No offense, I'm going to send this out to my subscribers, to my weekly options people. Weekly options new SPX bear call spread. So if you're sitting in death by meeting right now, doesn't matter. I can run my entire portfolios from my cell phone, literally, folks. I can send out trade alerts. I can make trades. No 13 expiry. I'm going to sell 15 of the 2135 calls. I'm going to buy 15 of the 2140 calls. If I could spell at a dollar twenty-five credit, and then I tell my traders uh, a range. I try and get filled on this trade plus or minus ten cents. I'd go up to a dollar thirty-five credit or down to a dollar fifteen, and then I also tell them at what levels I'd look to adjust the trade if it was going against me. I'd look to adjust the trade at about two twenty and eject, meaning get out of it. At 250, I'd eject from the trade at 250. Done. Let me take a look at my cell phone. Make sure that fired. Three, two, one. Got it. Yep. So, texts are working. So, folks, that's a that's an example of. <laughs> I do that in an hour and a half, that live trading session, and you guys got it in about 35 minutes. Because I had to tell you who I am, to be honest with you. You can't go to these things without a, uh, who is this guy, and you know, why the hell am I even listening to him? So if you're interested, uh, here's a perfect example, folks. Last week, two of our weekly options trades on the S&P 500, uh, 3,800 $3, bucks, 3,700 uh, bucks in profit on 11 grand in risk. They were about $5,500 a piece. It was a, and these were two one-day trades. Monday, I, it was a bear call spread, I think, that we closed after a, a day, and Tuesday we put on a bull put spread. Uh, but those aren't all of our portfolios, folks. They're, they're not all. So we trade weekly options, which are very, very tactical. We trade the accelerated retirement, which I have positions on at the January of, of 2018, folks. Um, these are just some kind words from people, eh, whatever, testimonials don't really turn me on. Folks, trading is a form of combat. When you think about it, combat uses human capital, the absolute most precious capital God ever created. Trading, physical capital, money. We also need to do intense planning and intel gathering in both combat and trading. We need tactics that support a strategy. We need to manage risk and contingency plan. So here's what I'm going to offer you uh, today, folks. If you liked anything at all that I had to uh, to say today, and I apologize for the sound again, uh, cutting in and out. I had to use my contingency plan uh, back up here on my phone, but that's what we have to do. We have two track. We have a couple tracks here. It's called full throttle. If you really want to take 
your options uh, training and trading full throttle, this is the place to do it. Here's how it works. If you're aggressive, fangs out, you want to shoot this market, man, take shots of opportunity, or if you're a little bit more conservative, uh, you know, keep some powder dry, or you want both and access to everything we do here at TGO, no worries. You're also going to get training every Wednesday night for about an hour and a half, two hours. Our volatility arbitrage trader does great training on Wednesday nights. You're going to get access to that. Here's where I need you to go. This is a link. It's topkinoptions.com uh, slash FT30options. Let me explain that. FT stands for full throttle. 30 means this is the monthly subscription plan. You don't have to sign up for an annual or any of that stuff. Options. Now choose the right track. If you're offensive, you're going to get everything we do here at Topkin Options and the weekly options portfolio. Okay? And this is going to be you. This is going to be you in your Navy F-18 gunning in Air Force jet. I always have to you know, put in a slide of me gunning an Air Force jet. That puts a smile on my face. If you're more defensive, you know, Wiz, I want to keep my powder dry a little bit. You're going to get access to all the live training services, and instead of the weekly options, the very tactical portfolio, why don't you take the uh, accelerate retirement? Okay? That's going to be you. Flying in your E-2 Hawkeye, looking down range, 300, 600 miles, a little further out in time. Okay? Just as important as the F-18 being fangs out, just a different way of doing it. Okay? Let's say you want both. You want max afterburner. You want access to everything that we do here at Topkin Options, all of our live training services and alert services. That's what we call max afterburner. That's you, full, full max afterburner, getting ready to go from zero to 200 miles an hour in about a second and a half. We have we we have that for you as well. Now again, I said 80% of our current folks work, but you don't have to be there for the live training sessions. A lot of people watch them, you know, during their lunch break or when the kids get home, you know, after school, homework's done or or they go to bed or over the weekend. But you are going to get the trades emailed out and sent immediately to you via text, right? And then we send out adjustments throughout the week as necessary or however long those trades are, okay? You're also going to get access to all of our manuals, primary, intermediate, advanced. Just These are your flight manuals, folks, and we squeezed all of those down into the most critical need-to-know information into what we call the OPCL, the Options Pocket Checklist. You're going to get access to that, too. That's about 300 bucks right there, to be honest with you. So here's how you get airborne, folks. There's a couple annual slots available uh, when you go to that page. Um, we don't open up a lot of annual slots because when we sell them, we have a tight-knit squadron. We can't, I, there's tons of questions in the chat box. We keep our training rooms smaller because Doug, my volatility arbitrage trader, and I do not ever leave a training session with a question unanswered. And, and I'm going to run out of time here to be able to answer all of yours. That's when I, that's why we kind of limit um, our live training sessions, okay, unfortunately for time. Uh, if you have any questions, concerns, you can talk to Annie Santos. She That's one of the areas I get all of my Brazilian intelligence from. She's from uh, Brazil, and uh, she does a lot of my Brazilian intelligence. A gathering. Thanks, Mark. I appreciate that. Um, well, Mark, I'm working with Matthews International tomorrow, so uh, <laughs> sign up for TGO and, and maybe we can talk. So, uh, Reed, uh, I went over a minute, man, so that means I owe everybody in here at least one beer for every minute that I've gone over, my brother. So I'd like to thank Reed for, uh, for having me uh, and uh, putting this uh, great event on today. Again, you can go to topkinoptions.com slash FT30options and you can grab a month-to-month -month slot, or if you want to save a little bit of money, you can join us here for an annual uh, slot uh, as well, okay?